I don't think I ever realized it was actually high, that Highland when it takes the corner. Yeah, I kept thinking it was Thornbush and I went, oh, this is Highland, huh, interesting. <laughs> All right, why don't we get started? I, I, hit the, uh, I hit the record button, so we are now being recorded. So uh, just to get started, uh, let me just go through the list of folks who are uh, with us tonight. Uh, Chris Trazik, Derek Greger, uh, Jim Woodworth, I think that is, Ann Hartman, Brian Summers. Uh, we also have Bruce Boxtall, I think it is. Uh, Carol is here with us. Uh, Ed C. from Rocky Hill. Uh, Kevin Hill from Town Council, Kevin Sullivan, Rob O'Connor, and I think I got everybody. If um, I missed you, please uh, please let me know. You missed my twin. Oh. Oh, okay. That's right. I'll put a I'll put in a double next, a two next to you. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is the nineteenth meeting of this uh, committee, and today is. Thursday, December 10th, which is hard to uh, believe. Um, uh, we've already gone through our introductions um, and here's our agenda for tonight. So um, we're gonna take a look at the meeting notes from the last meeting back in November. Uh, we're gonna primarily today talk about the, pretty much the uh, last chapter uh, of uh, the plan, which is chapter 10. as we start to get into the actions and the recommendations. We're also gonna discuss the format uh, for the uh, actual implementation chapter of the plan and how we're gonna uh, lay that out, how we're gonna prioritize projects and, and that kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna circle back towards the end of the meeting and talk about uh, anything new and exciting with some of our projects. Uh, we'll open it up to any other business. There is a grant um, opportunity that uh, we'll discuss uh, under other business. And then uh, our next meeting will be after the new year on January 14th of 2021. Let's start off with the discussion uh, about the meeting uh, notes from the November 12th meeting. Um, hopefully folks had a chance to look at those. Did anyone have any uh, comments, uh, corrections, or suggestions for things we did not cover? Yep, look good. Look good, Peter, thank you. Yep, okay, we'll move on then. I'm assuming everyone can see this screen. I should have asked at the beginning, but. Uh, so um, at the last meeting, there was a suggestion that we post the various draft chapters that we've gone through uh, to this point on the, the um, web pages uh, that we set up on the town website. So sections one through nine have been posted on the town website. So uh, if you uh, wanna take some time and you can't sleep at night, uh, by all means, take a look at those, uh, those chapters. And if you've got uh, comments, uh, things we did not um, incorporate uh, when we reviewed them uh, back in uh, 2019, please um, let me know, send me an email or mark them up and send them my way. I've also listed the location of uh, the chapters on the town website. So as you recall, we have a website where we've posted various documents, various reports, maps, that kind of thing of the work to date. But um, the chapters, the draft chapters had not been posted until probably about two weeks ago. So uh, if you want to take some time, refresh your memory, please uh, go back and uh, take a look at those because those will become the basis for the um, uh, document that we put out for public hearing. Okay. Just to refresh your memory, um, these are the chapters that we have worked on already in the uh, previous meetings. Um, so the first two uh, chapters deal with just uh, acknowledgement for the folks who have been working on this. Uh, there's an, an executive summary at the very beginning, uh, which lays out uh, the overall plan. Uh, there's a chapter that kind of supports the benefits of why we're, why we're doing this work, why we're putting together a bike and pedestrian plan in the first place. 
Um, section four summarizes the community engagement, uh, the public involvement that we've had uh, up till this point in time and summarizes that. Uh, section five uh, lays out the vision and goals that we established early on in the process um, for going through this um, planning effort. Uh, section six kind of lays out uh, the previous documents that are going to form that have formed the basis for this work. Uh, some of them are town reports, some of them are regional reports, uh, and some of them are state um, documents uh, that we've reviewed and uh, uh, synthesized into this uh, planning effort. Uh, section seven, just to refresh your memory, uh, discusses the programs we presently have in place that we will be building on as the plan goes forward. Uh, section eight, uh, I believe, was probably the longest document, the longest document in the in the chapters, um, which kind of laid out uh, all of the existing conditions, uh, the inventories, and those kinds of things. And then, lastly, at last uh, the last meeting we had. Uh, we've included an ADA transition plan to satisfy um, some of the ADA requirements that the town is facing as it relates to uh, improvements within the public right of way. So we've done quite a bit of work uh, to this point um, and all of that information is now publicly available on the website. And I encourage you, uh, if you have the time to please go back and get me some additional feedback. Uh, if you're willing to do that. Okay, uh, this is a, a summary of um, what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. So primarily we're talking about, uh, uh, we're beginning, beginning the conversation or, or following up on previous conversations of some of the actions and recommendations that will be uh, identified in the plan. Uh, tonight's um, conversation will not be all inclusive of all of the actions and recommendations that we're going to incorporate, but it gives you a flavor for uh, some of those, those recommendations that will be included in the plan. Uh, at the next meeting uh, in January, and I assume it's going to carry over into, into February, we're going to get into the minutiae of some of the recommendations, uh, and we're going to start figuring out which are top priorities, which are medium priorities and which are lower priorities. Uh, but tonight we're gonna kind of go through the structure uh, of the recommendations uh, so that uh, we don't miss any of the things we've been work working on uh, to this point in time. So uh, this slide kind of summarizes uh, how, how we're organizing um, the actions uh, and recommendations as we lay out um, the implementation plan. So obviously we're gonna talk about uh, the pedestrian uh, recommendations, the pedestrian facilities and the pedestrian uh, network in the community. Uh, we're then going to talk about uh, the bicycle uh, facilities and the bicycle network recommendations. Uh, there are some other recommendations. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, where we need to locate uh, bicycle racks. We're gonna, we're, there are going to be some recommendations on uh, bus shelters and bus stops. And then lastly, there's going to be a series of recommendations on um, improvements to existing uh, policies and programs, and also new policies and programs uh, that we hope uh, will be implemented over the uh, planning period for this uh, for this document. Let's start with uh, the pedestrian facilities that we're going to um, ultimately identify. So, if you recall, in some of our previous previous meetings, we had a list and a map of where the uh, significant sidewalk gaps were in the community. Uh, we also had talked about primarily from public uh, input where uh, there are stretches of uh, sidewalks uh, in the community that need uh, significant improvement or, or have uh, deteriorated. Uh, we identified uh, at previous meetings a series of intersections that we felt needed further study and further improvement. So the plan will also uh, recommend uh, intersection uh, analysis. We've already started that work uh, with some UConn uh, engineering uh, students, uh, and Derek's going to give us a little summary of where that uh, effort is already uh, taking us. Uh, we're going to look at um, where there are recommended um, uh, street crossings that may not exist today. 
uh, and that would also include a discussion of where we want to make uh, improvements as uh, pedestrian crossings uh, intersect with the uh, rail line here in town. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, where there might be shared use use paths in the community. Uh, we're going to talk about streets that uh, have been identified as being in need of traffic calming, uh, where folks have uh, experienced uh, recurring uh, incidents of speeding on a regular basis. And then we're also going to talk about uh, the uh, off-street uh, trail system and trail recommendations in the community. So that's kind of a summary of the um, major categories uh, of this particular chapter as it relates to pedestrian uh, facilities. Uh, are there any questions at, at this point before I uh, continue to go forward? Okay. Peter. Um, yes. Uh, I was just wondering if it was just me or you were breaking up pretty badly at that at that point, I don't know if other people experienced that too, or is that was just me? I was hearing him fine. Yeah, it sounded good on my end. Yeah, yeah. I was okay too. Maybe it's your um, okay. no connection. Okay, I I shut off lots of other things, so I'll, I'll turn my video off again. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So uh, as I said earlier, um, these slides are not to be uh, viewed as being all inclusive. Um, so um, there are many of these um, uh, lists that I will show you in the upcoming slides uh, are abbreviated versions. Uh, so they won't include all of the particulars uh, for this particular subject. But uh, in this in terms of this slide, these are uh, street streets, street segments that had been identified uh, as uh, lacking uh, significant areas of sidewalk. Um, so, uh, so we've include, included them under the category of uh, sidewalk gaps. So this just gives you a flavor. There are many uh, important and significant uh, arterial roads on this list. Um, so clearly uh, there are stretches uh, within town although we have a, a pretty comprehensive uh, network of sidewalks uh, in many cases on both sides of, of, of all streets, uh, there are significant um, stretches where uh, there are no sidewalks on either side and there are gaps. So you've got the Berlin Turnpike, you've got portions of the Silestine Highway, Wells Road, Ridge. Uh, these are pretty uh, high profile, highly traveled roads. Um, the other uh, angle here is uh, in many cases, uh, these are also, uh, some of them are state roads, um, which is a, um, the state DOT has not been in the business of uh, building sidewalks. Um, so there may be challenges to implement uh, those recommendations as it relates to some of the uh, state roads. So it's important uh, that we acknowledge, acknowledge that. So that's the uh, first category that we will be making recommendations. And sorry, Let's see if I can Pete, get this. Yep. Peter, Chris. quick question. Yep. On those um, sidewalk gaps, are we looking to make sure that we have sidewalks on at least just one side of the street, or is that both sides of the street? I think where there are gaps, uh, you know, if we can get one side, yeah, the battle in many cases is one rather than. Uh, assuming we're going to get it on uh, both sides, but it really depends on the particular street. So, okay. uh, but, but we will get into that level of detail in the recommendations. Um, so at the next meeting, if you have a particular street in mind, um, you know, make a note and uh, we'll, we'll discuss those in, in, in significant detail next time. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, so we also uh, heard loudly from many people throughout the community that there are, uh, once again, uh, street uh, segments um, that the condition of the sidewalks are in uh, significant need of improvement. Um, we do not uh, have um, a detailed sidewalk conditions uh, inventory. 
uh, we're going to include that in the um, policy and program recommendations that um, as resources allow. Uh, and if we can do that at some point, we do uh, have a conditions survey of the sidewalk network uh, in the community that could become the basis um, for a more comprehensive um, listing of sidewalks in town that need improvement. Um, but nevertheless, we are developing that list and we developed it primarily through the community survey that we did uh, and the, some of the public meetings um, that, we, uh, that we did. But this gives you a flavor uh, for the list. The list is much more significant than I'm showing you uh, on the screen. We also went through a process of identifying uh, intersections where there were uh, significant concentrations of um, collisions. Uh, if you recall, we did a, a heat map that identified uh, where those intersections were and what the level of uh, accident data showed us. Um, and um, you'll see from this list, once again, this is not the complete list, but there are quite a number of intersections uh, that uh, are in need of further evaluation to see if there are uh, trends in those accidents in terms of side swipes or other uh, common occurrences that have occurred at those intersections to see if improvements uh, are warranted. Uh, in some cases, it's just geometry. In some cases, it's lack of crosswalks. Um, uh, and in other cases, it's the condition of the intersection um, that might warrant um, improvements, but we will be uh, putting together a, a, a longer list of those intersections um, that need improvement. And then obviously we will be trying to figure out what the priority intersections are so we can focus on those um, at the outset. As I said earlier, we are going, we have looked at and are going to continue to look at uh, the pedestrian uh, crossings uh, at the rail line in town. Um, these are the crossings uh, that uh, exist today. Uh, as I said, we are, we are looking at a couple of them right now, in particular with the UConn students, uh, but we want to have a, a series of recommendations for what's necessary uh, for pedestrian improvements at those crossings. We are also looking at where there are crosswalk improvements uh, warranted, uh, whether they be at intersections or whether they be uh, at mid blocks. Um, once again, from the survey, um, the, the community survey, but also uh, more specifically from the field work that many of you volunteers did for us. Uh, we have a series of notes uh, and recommendations for uh, uh, all of I would say almost all of the more significant intersections uh, in town. Uh, at a previous meeting, we had identified how many intersections we looked at, and we identified um, which ones were the more significant um, that needed improvement. Uh, but many of the recommendations have to do with making those uh, intersections safer for pedestrians um, than, they, than they exist today. So once again, the plan will have recommendations as it relates to crosswalk improvements throughout the community. And please jump in if I'm going too fast or you have a particular uh, question, uh, don't, don't be shy about that. Peter, I just thought, I noticed that <clears throat> Mill Street and Middletown Avenue or gaps on, uh, of sidewalk gap was, was mentioned and then railroad crossing was mentioned for Mill Street and Middletown, and Middletown Avenue or Mill Street, whatever. And hope that those two are connected so that the crossing on the railroad is corrected then also the crossing from the or the sidewalk from the railroad to the corner of Middletown Avenue is also part of that solution instead of two separate projects. Kind of. Yep. I, I think one of the things we're going to look at in the final um, implementation plan is taking a, a corridor by corridor approach or mm -hmm. street, street by street approach. Uh, one of the things that we started to see as you listed the recommendations that, you know, for example, Wilkett Hill Road, there were a number of recommendations. Um, so I think uh, at the end of this, uh, as, as you noted, 
rather than doing the spot improvements all over town. If there are a concentrated number of improvements on a particular corridor, then we really should be looking at this on a corridor by corridor uh, level rather than you know spot improvements here and there or an area or a neighborhood you know neighborhood level series of improvements. So I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about that uh, uh, at the next few meetings as to the best approach to do that so that we don't you know so we have the biggest bang for our buck. Thank you. Yep. So we. Yes. I have a, just a quick question. When you when you put in a crosswalk, what's kind of the minimum or what's the requirement in terms of ADA? Are, are all crosswalks viewed the same in terms of ADA or does it depend on the type of road that it is? I'll let, I'll let Derek uh, jump in, but the short answer is yes, they all are um, meant to be uh, ADA compliant when they are uh, reconstructed. I mean, our complete streets policy that we adopted earlier uh, in, in the summer uh, has has language to that effect. And uh, our policy has been when we um, improve uh, anything, uh, we look at uh, making sure that they are built to uh, ADA uh, compliance levels. Derek, you want to you want to add anything to that? No, I think you covered it. Um, you know, as Peter was saying, when we replace sidewalk ramps, we make sure they have the warning tiles, the detectable tiles that are required. We check slopes. Um, that as we look at intersection improvements in different areas, you know, that's something we'll be evaluating as well. Um, as far as the crosswalk, the painted markings, um, we put them to DOT standards as far as uh, width and uh, spacing um, and length of the lines. So. Um, we try to meet all the current requirements when we do this work. Thanks. Okay, uh, so uh, we did also hear uh, from the various community meetings we had in the survey that there are uh, recurring uh, claims of uh, high volume uh, vehicles um, on, on a number of these streets. Um, some of the claims are more accurate uh, than others, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to um, uh, make recommendations that uh, potentially we should have a traffic calming program in place where it is determined uh, that there are uh, excessive speeds documented by the Weathersfield Police Department. Um, these are some of those streets that were identified. Once again, it's not an all inclusive listing. Um, but as you can see, there are trends appearing um, on these lists. Many of the same streets uh, are being identified. So once again, uh, we're, when we talked earlier about a corridor by corridor approach, uh, this kind of helps to reinforce that um, as we do these improvements, we should be looking at uh, all of the levels of improvements and all of the various issues that each of these corridors are experiencing rather than just simply doing spot improvements to take care of uh, one particular one particular issue. Um, we also, um, we do not have a significant um, uh, inventory of trails uh, uh, in town, but nevertheless, we have uh, small, uh, not necessarily interconnected uh, trail system, but nevertheless, um, there will be recommendations for enhancements uh, and new trails uh, in a number of uh, town parks primarily and uh, um, other locations. So this is just a listing to date of, uh, this is probably the, this is probably the more comprehensive of all the slides in terms of um, the trail recommendations that, that we gathered during this um, process. Peter, at some point I'd like you to add the uh... Wood, wood parcel trail to that list. One of these days I'll have a better map, but um, it's not that long, but it's, it's incredibly well used and yep. it's on, the way, on its way to being accessible, uh, raised up to accessible guidelines. Part of it is more or less already. Um, okay. <clears throat> we'll, we'll make that note. Um, uh, so the plan will also include 
uh, a series of recommendations as it relates to uh, bicycle facilities and uh, trying to establish uh, a network of bike, bike routes and bike trails throughout the community. Uh, we will classify them in the recommendations uh, um, uh, based on uh, recommended design approaches. These are the five categories of uh, bike routes that we talked about at previous meetings. Um, Hartford has developed their own um, kind of definitions. So we're gonna take a peek at those and make sure ours match up with theirs as these trail networks uh, should connect ultimately with the trail networks, uh, I'm sorry, the bike route networks in our surrounding uh, community. So we'll make sure that those um, link up with each other as we make the final uh, recommendations. Peter, does uh, Sheros, uh, the, the, where does Sheros fit on that list? Uh, share, under shared? Sh uh, under shared, yeah, okay. Yep. But we'll be, uh, we'll be more specific in the final recommendations. Yeah. And Peter, if I, if I may, what's the difference between shared use path and shared? Uh, sh shared use uh, path is um, uh, used for pedestrians as well as bicyclists, um, whereas shared are primarily uh, sharrows on uh, existing streets where you can't accommodate uh, any of the other types of bike routes. Thank so you. in terms of our recommended uh, bike uh, paths and routes in the community, uh, we had uh, identified a series of north-south um, routes and a series of east-west uh, linking routes. So these are, once again, I don't know that this is uh, complete, but nevertheless, it gives you a flavor uh, for some of those corridors that we are uh, looking at as being uh, part of a townwide network of uh, bike routes. So they're all pretty much major, <laughs> major roads, uh, more significant roads. Uh, also, many of them are state roads. So there are um, potentially uh, challenges with that given they're not town roads and we do not have um, uh, uh, maintenance responsibilities right now, um, but we may have to have that conversation uh, based on uh, the way the Connecticut DOT uh, operates. So um, there may be challenges, but nevertheless, we wanted to make sure we had a comprehensive logical network that um, services um, and creates connectivity to our surrounding communities. And uh, these roads tend to meet that objective. Uh, there are a couple of others um, as we continue on here with the bike route listing. Um, there are uh, a couple in um, Old Weathersfield that we've talked about uh, very recently, including Hartford Avenue connecting up to state, uh, Main Street, which is part of the uh, heritage uh, route, um, our project on Marsh and Great Meadow Road, uh, Broad Street. Uh, we also will have to discuss uh, even though the uh, rail line has been reactivated, whether the uh, rail trail concept should be uh, included maybe as a, a future alternative in the plan. And then lastly, um, when, as we talk about connectivity, we wanna make sure that there are uh, connections to uh, Glastonbury, uh, connections into Hartford and connections uh, south into uh, Rocky Hill as we lay out this um, this network of bike routes, Peter, for uh, for Rocky Hill, uh, I don't know if you want to also add um, uh, old main old Main Street, uh, Middletown Avenue, and then Highland, right? Yes, we 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 connect with you in three ways, three yep. areas. Thank you. Um, so we will also be talking about, uh, uh, if, you, if you recall at an earlier meeting, uh, we had inventoried uh, where 
all of the uh, available uh, bicycle uh, parking facilities were in the community. And it uh, was interesting um, and it was uh, revealing uh, that there were um, very few uh, bicycle uh, parking facilities uh, in the community. Uh, fortunately, through the uh, AARP grant, we did install a number of additional um, bike racks at um, facilities that did not uh, already have them. So the list has now uh, gotten smaller, but nevertheless, uh, there are uh, still uh, many facilities in town that do not have bicycle parking. Um, so we will be making specific recommendations as to uh, which schools, which community facilities, which parks, uh, and then um, how we incorporate uh, future bicycle parking into uh, multifamily developments, uh, employment facilities, shops, uh, visitor attractions, and then also um, new, uh, new developments uh, as they come through the permit uh, review process. We have um, this issue, I think since this committee has been formed, uh, uh, has brought that issue to the table. And I think many of our new developments, although we do not have regulations in place, have agreed uh, to put in uh, bicycle uh, parking uh, as part of the development mm -hmm. review process. But we will have recommendations in the plan uh, that are some of our ordinances and our zoning regulations in particular uh, should incorporate requirements for uh, bicycle parking and new developments. Uh, we're also gonna make some recommendations on which bus stops uh, might uh, uh, benefit from um, future uh, bus shelters and which bus stops uh, based on their volume of activity should have some level of additional uh, improvements, uh, particularly as it relates to handicapped uh, accessibility. So bus patrons um, are not as challenged as they may be now uh, getting on uh, a Connecticut transit bus. So we will have recommendations in the plan as it relates to that as well. Um, so the plan will also, as we said earlier, include a series of policies and program recommendations. We're gonna follow the, it used to be the five E's, but now it's the six E's uh, structure of recommendations. Um, so that's engineering, education, uh, encouragement, enforcement, equity, and evaluation. So um, we're gonna structure uh, the implementation plan as it relates to the uh, recommendations under these six categories. Um, some, of those, some of those policies and program recommendations are to um, continue to keep uh, a bicycle and pedestrian committee in place uh, to kind of shepherd uh, and have an umbrella uh, to make sure the recommendations are being implemented into the future. Uh, um, we're going to make some recommendations on possible uh, funding uh, changes. Um, we're gonna make some recommendations on uh, providing training to some of the town staff so they are aware of the plan and they are aware of the recommendations. Um, uh, as I said earlier, we're gonna recommend that if possible, um, we uh, fund a sidewalk condition survey so we have a better handle on where the, where the need is. Uh, we're recommending that we create a new sidewalk gap program um, so that there's some funding uh, for new sidewalk uh, in going forward in the future. Uh, so these are just a, just a short list, uh, but there are many other recommendations that we're going to um, incorporate ultimately into the, uh, the final um, plan. But this just gives you a little flavor for what some of those recommendations might be. Um, so, and then lastly, we're gonna incorporate an implementation plan um, to make sure these recommendations are uh, properly identified. Um, they are uh, going to ultimately be prioritized, A being the uh, uh, higher priority and C being the lowest priority. Uh, the plan will have a specific description of what those recommendations are. Uh, so there's no confusion going forward in the future. Uh, there's going to be uh, an attempt to identify when these improvements uh, should 
possibly be implemented. Uh, that may, might be challenging, but nevertheless, we're going to we're going to make that effort. We're going to identify who the lead uh, or organization is for the recommendation, and then we're going to identify who the partners are that would support uh, the the entity or the individual leading that uh, as as they support that effort. And then lastly, uh, we're going to uh, make an effort to identify. Uh, funding opportunities for the recommendations uh, and potentially identify what the costs are for the recommendations if we can get uh, if we can get into that level of detail. This is the format. Uh, so this is a uh, um, format from the existing plan of conservation and development. There is an implementation chapter in the plan of conservation and development. So we want to make sure that these recommendations uh, fit nicely into the format of the existing plan of conservation and de development. And this is the format um, that is used uh, in that document. As you can see, um, the recommendations are prioritized, A, B, or C. There is a description uh, in the table uh, to what the recommendation is. Uh, there's a column for timing. This is just sort of a cut and paste from the so, so never mind the 2012 schedule, but uh, this is just a cut and paste. Um, we're going to incorporate uh, a target date, as I said. Uh, we're going to try and identify the funding uh, sources. Some of the recommendations may not need funding. So uh, in, this, in this particular format, these recommendations from the plan did not require. So it says an NA. We're going to identify who the lead organization is, whether it's a commission or an individual. And then we're going to uh, and identify who the partnering organizations are uh, that would assist uh, as the uh, recommendation uh, is implemented. So uh, when we meet in um, January and, and February, uh, we will be going through the recommendations in this exact format, and uh, we will be going line by line uh, trying to um, fill in the blanks. Um, so, so we, uh, at the next meeting, we, the staff will take a stab at the, the initial draft of, um, you know, what we think the priorities should be and uh, an attempt to fill in the blanks. Uh, so, so you guys won't have to do uh, that heavy lifting. We will uh, present um, uh, the recommendations. It, it may take a, a, a couple of meetings to get through all of the recommendations, but nevertheless, we want to take uh, the right amount of time uh, to flesh out the recommendations and debate them uh, so that everybody's uh, on the same page with the with the final um, series of recommendations. Uh, one of the one of the probably the more, one of the more challenging things will be to figure out prioritization. So as we go through and try and figure out what the priorities, these are uh, some of the criteria that we're going to be looking at. Um, Obviously, we have limited resources. Uh, many of these um, improvements are going to have to compete uh, with uh, other uh, town needs. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, we are going to try and prioritize so that we can focus in on the more important and the more significant uh, recommendations. So uh, the scoring system that um, we're going to be using um, initially focuses on, on if we're going to make uh, improvements, let's make sure uh, they're um, we're looking at whether they're near schools, uh, whether they're near parks, whether they connect with transit. Uh, so in essence, we want to make sure uh, that the higher priority projects uh, uh, improve our connectivity um, as it relates to these resources in town. Uh, some of the other criteria is are they, are they near uh, higher density uh, housing and are they near uh, employment centers so that people can uh, either walk and or bike uh, to work or to their homes. Um, we're also going to look at whether there was uh, in the community surveys uh, significant public support for some of the recommendations. When we did the survey, uh, there were many uh, uh, projects identified that had uh, overwhelming uh, community support and were recommended by many, many people in the community survey. So we're going to look at that as, also as a criteria. Uh, we're also going to look at whether they're on a state or a town road. Uh, that does uh, factor in, um, as I said earlier, uh, the state um, 
sometimes has a different approach uh, than the town would. So we have to be mindful of whether the town uh, has control over the uh, particular uh, location of the recommendation or whether it's a state uh, state highway. The good part about them being on, if they're on a state highway, um, they certainly have more resources than the uh, local community does. Uh, but then at the same time, they also have potentially a different um, different approach. Um, when the, uh, if you recall, when we were going through the pl planning process, they repaved uh, Jordan Lane. Uh, Derek was able to approach the state uh, and ask them to include a uh, shoulder lane. Um, but anything more than that uh, would have probably obligated the town to be responsible for uh, if we designated as a as a an official uh, bike route um, that the town would have to uh, potentially be responsible for the fu future maintenance of the um, bike route signs and the pavement markings uh, and that kind of thing. So um, we once again have to be mindful uh, of that as well. And then lastly, uh, obviously um, projects that improve uh, public safety uh, should, should also rate pretty highly in the prioritization scheme. Are there any questions on the uh, project? prioritization. I just want you to think about these things uh, before our next couple of meetings and, and keep this uh, in mind as we attempt to prioritize things. Peter, Go ahead. I was going to say, I think there's uh, a, something that's missing from this list kind of fits on near multifamily and employment. I'm thinking of our gap on Mill Street, where <clears throat> uh, employment also, there are services. There's the dentist, there's uh, drug stores, um, <clears throat> there's eating places, and there's that, that also generate a lot of traffic. Um, so that would seem to me to be a high on the scoring system somewhere, or it should be involved in the scoring system. <clears throat> yeah, I think the, the employment, uh, you know, the, the commercial nature of your neighborhood um, would obviously uh rate highly as it relates to that well i just think that that should be part of the criteria is, is yeah. uh commercial or services or something like that yep that that's what i'm saying yep yeah rob i think you um yeah you know, I mean, it's, it's something along that line but i just think like the economic benefit of a project as you look in it or maybe maybe like a cost cost versus economic benefit just so that you know, that you can see in an area that you might do things where it would affect stores and businesses and like an overall thing, like the economic impact should have some kind of a rating on it. Okay. Peter, it's Chris. Um, I was just gonna ask, do we know how some of the other communities have um, fared in dealing with the state on the state roads? I'm thinking in particular Hartford or Simsbury who have fairly robust um, bicycle pedestrian policies in place already. Uh, Derek, you wanna chime in on your um, uh, uh, admittedly limited um, experience with the DOT? Uh, maybe that sheds a little bit of light. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with what other municipalities have been doing with DOT. Um, you know, I think that's something that this process will spark the discussion with them. Um, as Peter mentioned, there's been some occasions like Jordan Lane where I approached them about making some changes and they seem to accommodate, um, but we haven't really more, we haven't gone more beyond uh, just adding some shoulders to provide some space and act as a traffic calming measure. So, you know, those discussions are going to have to happen. I don't, I don't know at this time, um, I don't have a feel for what their position is gonna be. I don't, don't misunderstand me. The state I, I has come a, a long way. Um, you know, they created the uh, CCGP uh, program to fund uh, these kinds of, of projects, um, you know, for, for a second time. So I think they're uh, committed uh, to these types of projects, but it's just another uh, layer 
uh, of involvement that we're going to have to be uh, mindful of. So whenever I think the plan also needs to identify that, uh, if it's a state uh, road, that there, um, the plan clearly identifies that. And uh, so everyone's aware that it's another, it's just another level um, yeah. of involvement. Okay, all right, thanks. Yep. Peter, Ed uh, here. Uh, the priority, yeah. you, you, you mentioned A, B, and C. <clears throat> and I was wondering uh, if, if the A, B, and C is that like, about, do you, are you gonna put a point system together? Is there some rubric that's attached to the A equals this criteria? No, I don't, I, no I don't think we wanna get into that level of, uh, we'll, we'll spend the next two years, you know, counting up points and moving them around. So it's more of a gener general uh, categorization. Um, uh, based on a number of factors. We actually um, started to do that based on the field work that the, um, uh, the volunteers had done for us. Um, so, uh, um, you know, we did keep that in mind and it's really a more of a proximity uh, thing, a geographic thing as it relates to, you know, proximities to schools, parks, you know, if it's on a if it's on a transit route, um, if it's near the Silestine Highway, you get another point. So um, when we um, present the final recommendations, we will um, have that level of, of conversation. So I, th it, I think it's flexible. I, I wouldn't want to get into a, you know, get into the minutia of how many points because we would be debating uh, debating this for a long time rather than you know simply uh, simply moving on with the with the recommendations. It's about proximity, as you said, mostly, huh? Yes, mostly. Um, and then trying to make sure there's okay. connect, connectivity to other facilities is really the more most important thing, I think, at the end of the day. That's why I think we need to have the conversation about, you know, uh, prioritizing corridors rather than just doing these individual intersection by intersection improvements. Right. We need to look at the whole uh, network um, uh, in, in its you know, totality. Okay. Uh, so in terms of where we are uh, with the draft plan, there is still uh, quite a bit of work uh, to do. Um, there will be a series of maps that we have not drawn up yet. Uh, we wanted to identify and prioritize the recommendations first, but at the uh, end of the day, the plan will include um, some mapping. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be very specific recommendations. Um, we have to hash out you know, who's responsible for these and, and get those entities to, to be on board as well. Uh, we need to do some costing and we need to match up the projects with potential funding sources. Fortunately, there are funding sources out there uh, as we continue um, uh, to find out. Um, we're gonna have to figure out the timing of these things, short, medium, and long-term. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to phase in these recommendations. Um, because there's go there are going to be a lot of them and it's gonna take uh, time uh, to implement them. And then lastly, as we just talked about, uh, we, need to, we need to prioritize, um, prioritize them. Uh, we also have to go through the um, community involvement process to get the, the plan adopted. Uh, that will include uh, public meetings. Um, we, we may need to have a couple of them. Uh, We'll need to circle back with the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, and go through that process. Uh, we need to uh, uh, bring the town council as well up to speed so they are aware uh, of this uh, plan and these recommendations. And I appreciate Kevin for uh, participating and, and representing the, uh, the town council at these meetings. Uh, there is a mandatory public hearing uh, required by statutes. And then lastly, we would have the Planning and Zoning Commission adopt uh, the final final plan. So um, there is a level of uh, continuing community involvement that we need to uh, uh, be thinking about as well. I think when we get the draft recommendations um, in place and uh, we've come to a, a level of comfort with that, uh, we sh should start talking about uh, public meetings. Um, obviously for the foreseeable future, they will be um, virtual 
but um, hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. And maybe before this uh, process is over, uh, we might be back to um, in-face meetings or uh, in-face meetings combined with virtual. It's probably the hybrid that we'll be looking at um, into, the, into the future. Uh, at, at, at this point, uh, are there questions um, on all of that uh, that I kind of threw at you? Um, now would be the time um, to probably have that conversation because the next slide, we're gonna start talking about um, some of the ongoing projects that are underway in the community. Peter, Peter, I just have a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Ann, that's fine. Uh, I had just have a, maybe remind me, um, because the state has adopted complete streets, does that, uh, does that offer any funding for the locals or, or add any insight or maybe obligations on the side of the state to deal with the issues that come up that involve the, the state streets that the town wants to deal with, or does that two completely separate? I, the, the fact that the state has a complete streets policy is obviously their official acknowledgement that you know they have the same philosophy that the communities uh, that have adopted their own. Um, you know, so we're on the same page, but it ultimately comes down to the details um, of the individual projects and whether they um, are in line with um, you know the state plans. We did look at um, the state um, plans. Um, and um, so I think if our recommendations are in line with uh, the state um, plan and its recommendations, obviously, um, you know, that's half of the uh, half of the work um, that's that's necessary. So but I guess, yeah, the answer to your question is it, it's going to be on a project by project basis rather than you know, we were both on exactly the same same page. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but. We'll see. I, I might be able to add a little bit to that. I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the uh, the state has an advisory committee that, that is supposed to help implement the state's complete streets plan. I'm pretty sure all of their efforts are pretty much uh, effectively directed just as to state roads. Um, and then as Peter mentioned earlier, I think it was Peter mentioned earlier, uh, how there's a community con connectivity and other grants. That's how they help the towns fund projects that the towns identify. But I don't think, and, and Derek may want to chime in on this too. I'm not aware that DOT otherwise really gets involved with uh, town projects like that, like you're suggesting. They definitely, when we submit funding applications and, and Derek can chime in here, uh, want to know whether the particular project is um, documented in uh, local existing uh, plans or specifically the plan of conservation and development. So going through this process and identifying these projects in a, an adopted uh, local document goes a long way uh, to qualify us for some of that uh, funding that's out there. Derek, you wanna you wanna add anything to that? Uh, no, I, I agree. I think it's definitely gonna be a benefit for us. Um, as Kevin said, I know the state has had projects in town. Um, a couple years ago, they came through uh, Silas Dean Highway, some of the other roads doing uh, handicap ramp replacements to make them ADA compliant. Um, I know they have uh, traffic signal projects going on where they were doing the same thing. Um, but I believe, as he said, that that's specific to state roads and uh, the funding that is available is, is for us to prioritize and, and go for. So having this plan will certainly um, give us something to lean on when we're trying to acquire funds for these types of projects. Thank you. Peter, uh, Kevin Sullivan, I also had a question about the uh, implementation and the uh, prioritization. Um, I don't know that you meant these uh, 
uh, strictly to be separate. You mentioned in the implementation section having maps. Um, I would think we would need maps to help guide the, the uh, prioritization. So um, I'm hoping that we can get some support with uh, mapping tools to help guide the, the prioritization. And with that, a, a specific suggestion uh, that I've been thinking about for a map might be uh, somehow uh, displaying all town properties to uh, maybe better see how things connect. I've been using the, the towns, at least the publicly available uh, layers on the GIS property map. And I don't seem to find the right combination uh, that really pulls up all the town parcels at the same time um, without private properties. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to want both, but uh, as far as low hanging fruit and priorities, a lot of times it comes down to schools and parks and things you were talking about. So uh, that might be a good one to try to have put together if that's possible. There is a, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a map that, that the MDC uh, uses as is their base map that I believe we have uh, electronically uh, that shows uh, all town facilities, parks, open spaces, um, community, I don't know what they call it, community facilities. So there is something that um, so I don't think is on the, well, I think it's on our website somewhere, but it's not readily uh, uh, available. It wouldn't jump out at you, but that could be um, and I've used that uh, as we were going through the rudimentary um, prioritization that we did in, in, in house. Uh, but I mean, it could be used as the base map um, for these final recommendations. Uh, um, so, so yeah, there is something out there and uh, which I think would um, hit, hit the button for you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions on uh, the previous slides? Okay. Peter, uh, one, one quick thought. I don't think we need to dwell on this, but uh, to follow up on Rob's thought about bringing economic development into the thought process, I almost wonder if we should have a seventh E for economy or economic development. Um, I don't know that we need that, but because um, in, in a lot of ways, sometimes a lot of these things are not going to be specifically a measurable economic boost. Um, but I think some of the things that are in there, maybe you could uh, flesh out in the details when you're mentioning employment centers or commercial centers. Um, it's not just the people getting there, it's also to help the, those economic, the points of economy. Um, especially, I think, in old Weathersfield, that's probably uh, more noticeable because there's more biking and walking activity going and there's more density of it at the present. But um, anyway, I, 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 would, I would like to see our economy prosper because of this work and uh, make sure it's identified because the public doesn't see it quite as much as sometimes we do. Thank you. I would, I, rather than uh, reclassify it as the seven E's, I would probably stick with the six E's and then uh, add in a, uh, uh, an additional criteria for the prioritization that kind of covers that um, economic uh, benefit component of it. We don't want you going off and creating your whole, a whole new we already gone from the five E's to the six E's. I don't know if you want to take the next step to the seven E's. It's my job to make things complicated, Peter. There you go. You're doing a good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, questions? Judy, Judy Keene wants to enter the meeting now. So I'm going to admit Judy Keene. Peter, I'm trying to find your, uh, the, the nine, uh, Chap previous chapters on your website. Yeah, there's a drop down. Um, they didn't make it easy to find. There's a drop down uh, box. Is, um, it, is it in planning and zoning? So uh, let me let me go back and 
Are you in the town website? I am. Here's the, let me go back to the link here. There, oops, went right past it. So can you see that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, so there's a bike-ped plan page. Uh, no, I don't see I don't see anything on on uh, right now. Okay, it's under it's under planning and zoning commission. Planning and, and zoning, yep. And then it lists a couple of subcommittees that uh, planning and zoning had uh, created. One of which is the uh, bicycle and pedestrian. And then um, there's a series of uh, PDFs. And then there's a couple of drop downs. Uh, one is for agendas, minutes. Um, if you play around with it, you will find uh, another folder that has um, those um, those chapters. So, uh, as I said earlier, it's not uh, not the uh, easiest uh, structure to find them, but they are in there. I did I did uh, check myself. So, could, could you send me that link? Uh, I can. Yeah, I'll send you it uh, offline. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right, let me, uh, let's get back on. Uh... Back on uh, track here, if I can find the right. There we go. Um, so uh, at this point, uh, we'll just give you a quick um, update of the various um, uh, projects. Uh, Derek, if you wanna uh, chime in on any highlights of any of these that, uh, you think are worth uh, sharing uh, with the group? Yeah, I could just provide a quick update uh, to these, uh, the CCGP grant in Old Weathersfield. Um, I haven't had a chance to do much since we talked last month. Um, most of the survey work has been done at this point. So um, it's in my court to get some design laid out. Um, I had done some of that work, but uh, I need to move that along so we can get to a point where we can have a, a public information meeting to discuss what we're looking to do and solicit some feedback. I'm skipping over the AARP, uh, going to Walker Hill Road. Um, I just had received in the past couple of weeks preliminary plans from our consultant. Um, I made some comments. I do have a meeting scheduled with them tomorrow to talk about, talk about my comments and also their schedule going forward. Um, so I'll have a better idea as to you know where, where we are with it. Um, we are a little bit behind schedule with the pandemic, um, slowed the work down to some extent. Um, plus I've been pretty busy. So sometimes it's taking me a little longer to get back to them than I like, but um, we are moving forward with it and still hoping for a, uh, to get out the bid and started at least this coming year. Um, with Walker Hill Road, I don't know if that was, it was mentioned last month, but we did get a, uh, bond funding from the state of $500,000 to do streetlights down the center uh, islands of that stretch of Walker Hill Road. That's from Jordan Lane North to the Hartford Line. So we're uh, at this point, we're looking to incorporate those funds into the project and utilize both the lots of funding and the uh, state bond funding that's being administered by uh, Department of Economic and Community Development. Um, into one project. So there'll be some cost savings on that project um, you know, by combining it with the bigger project for the road reconstruction. Highland Street, as I mentioned earlier, is pretty much complete at this point. Contractor has some pavement markings they need to install, but the majority have been installed at this point. Um, they do have signs still uh, that I'm hoping will be in, uh, if not tomorrow, by next week. And that would be it aside from what they need to come back uh, in the spring. They'll need to do some restoration work because this was such a late project. A lot of the grass is not going to take um, where they did some loam and seed. But other than that, the project is uh, pretty much done at this point. Um, Hartford Avenue repaving. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we did put some shoulder lines down the road. Um, initially, we had just put in the uh, center lines, but uh, this is one of the routes that we were looking at doing some shoulders. So not again, not an official bike lanes, but shoulder space, which serves two purposes, it gives a uh, separation for, for bicyclists and cars. And also um, with the intent of the narrower lanes is to slow traffic down. Um, we did the same thing along Highland Street where we have narrower lanes now. And um, you know, hopefully that'll help with uh, traffic speeds in those areas as well. Uh, Great Meadow Road improvements on Heritage Way. 
Um, we've talked, we do, we have been awarded the project, uh, just over $700,000. Um, that's something we'll you know, get started on as soon as we can as far as getting survey and design work done related to that. Um, that will tie into the Putnam Bridge Trail project. Um, we've had some recent meetings with uh, Town of Glastonbury and DOT um, to discuss uh, maintenance responsibilities for the trail. Um, DOT has some concerns on how responsive they can be after a storm to clear uh, the, the trail deck that goes over the bridge. Um, they have asked the towns to uh, help in, in clearing that snow off the bridge, um, which is a little bit uh, more complex and involved than we were anticipating for the project. So at this point, we're still in discussions with DOT on how, how that will be handled. And I'm, I'm not sure what the result that will be yet, um, but that is uh, being discussed because they are they have gotten to a point where they are looking to uh, go out to bid and get ready for construction this coming year. So that project uh, has moved along. Um, just a couple other things to note that are not on the list here. Um, MDC has been working in Church Street and Knott Street near Silas Dean Highway for the last few months doing some water main replacements. Um, Mr. Sullivan had asked about putting in some uh, shoulder lines when they restripe. So I am, uh, I am doing some layouts on that. I'll talk to MDC about. Um, they will be milling and overlaying chart, uh, Church Street in that area next year. And I suspect they wouldn't have any issues putting uh, lines down there. As far as Knott Street, um, last I knew DOT was not requiring them to do a full mill and overlay, although I think they really should. Um, so depending on if they if they do force MDC to do that, we might have some opportunity to get some um, shoulder lines put back. They already had them out there, uh, but I think we can um, tighten up the lanes a little bit and give a little bit more shoulder space in those road in that road in that stretch of the road at least, um, which would be helpful. Uh, we did just install a couple new uh, sidewalk ramps and a crosswalk as you enter the cove uh, at the very full north end of Main Street. Um, that seems, from what I'm hearing, is getting some use. And one other project that um, I, I don't recall if it was discussed last time, but we also, in the same pot of money, uh, bond funding that we got at Hill Road Lights, uh, we have a million dollars for Spring Street Pond Dam renovations, and that includes some uh, amenities or park improvements in the area. So um, there is a Beaver Brook master plan. This is along that route. Um, so with those funds, we're hoping to address the flooding issues we had down there due to the washout of the dam and also uh, be able to provide some uh, park amenities, maybe restructure some of the roadways down there to give more um, park space. So we have some different thoughts, but that's something that will also be coming down the road um, as that money has been awarded to us. And, and uh, don't, don't forget, Derek, on top of all of those uh, projects, uh, you lost uh, two of your senior staff members within the course of a two week period. So um, lots of things happening in your department. Yeah, we had a couple of retirements. Um, so good for those guys, but uh, yeah, we've been a little short staff lately. So one of the reasons why I'm a little bit behind, but uh, we'll, uh, we're still moving along. I'm looking to I fill those positions uh, pretty soon. We are interviewing right now, so hopefully uh, we can get those filled and get back on track. Any uh, questions on any of uh, any of that? Not so much a question, job, but considering you're short staffed. Thank you. Um, just on on Hartford Ave, <clears throat> just I know it's just my own experience, but I I definitely think that the um, the striping has calmed the traffic down. I, I, I'd like to hear from like the residents there to, cause I think they're the ones who experienced it firsthand, but like just driving that when I drive in on most days, you can just tell that this, the speeds are, are lower and it's kind of like, it feels more like a, there's, there's some, there's some um, planning to the road and not just, you know, the, the uh, I saw something this week, they were saying if you, some, somebody was on, on this show about building roads and if you they said if you build a road to look like a the barrel of a gun and people will drive like a bullet so it's like and that road sort of was one of those things where you just and it's sort of like state street you know it's like there's no lines no nothing you just drive the way you want to drive but it definitely feels like you're compressed and you're kind of and the and the crosswalks being bright and stuff i think help out too and then and biking on it too is better I mean, people park occasionally there but it's kind of like it's still it still feels like a more sane drive there. So, yeah, glad to hear it. You know, we have 
we have a lot of roads like that in town that are just so exceptionally wide. Um, you know, I think you, regardless of, uh, you know, bicycle enhancements, it, it makes sense to do that just from uh, traffic speeds and yeah. calming. Yes. Uh, this is Kevin Sullivan. I'd like to second that. Uh, having ridden a bicycle and uh, driven a car on both uh, Hartford Ave and Highland, uh, now that they've been striped, uh, I definitely feel uh, more constrained. Uh, that's probably not the best term, but that's the point of it for, from a uh, uh, traffic calming standpoint. And it's, that's also been my observation on a bike that uh, drivers are driving more slowly. So let's, let's hope it continues to work. That's awesome. And uh, thank you for getting that done. Welcome. I don't know, Peter, if you want to jump in on the AARP, I'm not as familiar with that grant project. Sure. Um, yeah, that project is pretty much wrapped up. We still have to uh, do the QR code stickers. Uh, we had to move a few things around on our uh, website uh, in anticipation of, of uh, doing that, but um, that is in uh, motion and should be um, finalized uh, relatively quick. I think we have one uh, um, bike rack that has to be relocated. We'll obviously wait to the spring uh, for that. Um, but in essence, yeah, that's um, that's pretty much a completed project. Which brings us um, to another um, topic. We did um, get notification uh, of the availability of this uh, particular uh, grant, uh, there is a, a um, letter of interest uh, that is due um, at the end of near the end of January, uh, which would uh, I, I wouldn't say pre-qualify because they could still say no, but it would uh, give us an indication um, that we would um, be eligible for the grant uh, uh, after that January 22nd deadline. I think the final deadline is ultimately in uh, March. So uh, it's People for Bikes uh, Community Grant Program, as you can see, uh, supports bike infrastructure projects, uh, advocacy initiatives uh, that ultimately make it easier and safer for people um, uh, to ride. Uh, and they stress all ages and all abilities. Uh, activities uh, are pretty, uh, that, that qualify are pretty wide open. Uh, engineering, uh, design work, construction costs, um, volunteer support costs even, um, which is very unusual. Uh, in the case of adv advocacy projects, the organization uh, will even fund staffing that is directly related, related to accomplishing the goals of the initiative. So um, this is a very broad um, series of qualifiers uh, that you normally don't see. Volunteers usually have to be in kind. Usually you can't pay for staffing. Um, and, um, and it also covers uh, engineering, um, design and construction. It's not a lot of money, it's only uh, up to $10,000, but nevertheless, um, there's another grant uh, opportunity um, available. So I wanted to uh, make uh, everyone aware of it and um, not that we necessarily have to decide uh, today, but if folks think there are um, projects that we should pursue uh, that we've either talked about during this process or others, um, please uh, let us know. Um, it's not that much work to put a letter of interest together. Um, so it's not a big, uh, a big ask uh, to do that by the end of January if we want to do that. I think Kevin, you had sent me an email um, a day or two ago that uh, had some, uh, some ideas. Do you want to um, share those uh, with the group, or we can obviously uh, talk offline. Sure. Um, I think there were three ideas were kind of a distillation of various ideas that have floated around from the from this advisory committee or Bike Walk, bike walk Weathersfield. Uh, they were uh, a bridge, a footbridge for primarily pedestrian use over Folly Brook, which uh, runs between Western Boulevard and Wintergreen Woods. Uh, one can get through that brook when the water's not high or rushing 
uh, very strongly, uh, but it is quite a dip um, where the stream cuts through there. So uh, a bridge would be very useful for uh, getting people over to Wintergreen Woods from uh, Western Boulevard and could be useful to uh, Emerson Williams School too as well. Um, there's been mention of pedestrian crosswalk art. I don't know if that's uh, doable in a short amount of time because there might be a fair amount of uh, planning or discussion that might have to go into what the art would be and where. Uh, I think the idea first came up uh, around uh, possibilities in Old Weathersfield and that would bring in the Historic Commission as well. Uh, the other one is a uh, bike walk Weathersfield had been trying to get uh, phys ed teachers uh, trained uh, as a start to a bike and walking ed uh, curriculum in the fourth grade in schools in town. Uh, that's been delayed by the pandemic, but we wondered uh, if a grant could help support development of something that, uh, that could be presented remotely, whether it be uh, zoomable, so to speak, or uh, uh, PowerPoint, that sort of thing. So those were the three things uh, that I sent to Peter, but that uh, uh, grant considerations now absolutely don't have to be limited to that. And the only other thing I'll add is a suggestion that maybe we consider getting our grant subcommittee together or some kind of ad hoc committee together uh, to uh, meet offline about it because January 21st is coming up pretty fast. Thank you. I'll just uh, chime in. I like the idea of um, working on the educational curriculum and training kids about bike safety. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, any other uh, thoughts out there? We can certainly uh, schedule um, another uh, offline meeting and open it up to, to anyone uh, who's interested to, to brainstorm uh, a little further. I didn't uh, look to see if uh, their website has a listing of um, previously funded uh, projects. That's always a good exercise to go through to see what they had previously uh, funded and what they like to fund. So that might be something uh, if we do meet again um, to um, take a look at uh, before we fix on a particular project. Um, and they, it, they do have to be obviously uh, geared to uh, riding, uh, bicycles and riding, so. Not okay. to get too far into the woods, but we have Ed Chuccarillo on the, on the line from Rocky Hill and, and the bridge idea was kind of stolen from uh, what uh, Walk Bike Rocky Hill's doing there. Um, Ed, would you be able to tell us real quick uh, a couple of things like, uh, what's the cost for the bridge, that pedestrian bridge that you're considering uh, what was the grant source and was there any engineering uh, needed by the town? Because I'm trying to, I'm thinking for this grant, we have to be really careful about Derek's time. Ed? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Kevin. Uh, actually, the, uh, the idea was uh, uh, re-stolen from uh, Jim Woodworth and the GMCT. So they uh, found a company, Bob Ludwig found a company, um, that uh, I was up in Maine that did uh, gang planks basically is what they call them. And I could send you the link to the, I, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but uh, they, they sell them pre-made and uh, they, Jim could talk a little bit probably about the one that they put over at the wood parcel because that in essence was uh, what we were looking at it just was a different size and structurally engineering wise, they had done the engineering already on them. So, um, you know, you don't have to have, a, you know, our concern was they wanted to get a, um, a gator over there and over the, over the, that bridge. Um, so the, the funding that we was uh, through the state <clears throat> evidently, and I don't know what it was, uh, there was a grant 
that was uh, money was given to uh, for Elmridge Park, and I was asking whether or not that some of that money could be used for the for the bridge, and we're still hoping it uh, it, it can. Uh, so uh, maybe maybe Jim could uh, uh, m m mention a few things, and I could look for the name of the uh, uh, the company. I, I could certainly get. I can't think of the name offhand because it's sort of generic, but but they. Uh, their uh, nameplate was on the docks uh, up at uh, Riverfront uh, Recapture uh, in uh, Riverside Park in uh, Hartford. So, and and you see them along the shore too. But uh, we bought this bridge for four thousand dollars, I think. The guy drove it down on the top of his pickup truck because he's a maniac, and uh, we installed it, four of us together. Um, and uh, it's beautiful and sturdy if you you'd have to decide how wide you want. It's too narrow for me to ride a bicycle over uh, unless you're a kid, I guess, but you can, they have wider ones and uh, uh, aluminum and it just comes and you just stick it in there. We, we anchored it on one side and, and uh, had flotation on the other side so it could be washed out if the, if the brick wanted to and then we could just bring it back with a few uh, football players. Um, so, so I found the uh, I found the name of the company. It's called Superior Docks. Yeah, that's it. That's the name of it, and I'll give you the phone number as well. It's two zero seven six six four two one two one. But they do have a website, and uh, they do have a number of uh, of um, of bridges. They call them gangplanks. Uh, that that you can uh, that you can see. Yeah, so great. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry, uh, Peter, sorry if I kind of uh, uh, took over your role as uh, uh, moderator of the call by inviting other people well, to talk. By all means, nope. Um, we got the information, so that was the uh, uh, important thing. So it sounds like maybe a wider version might not be uh, out of the realm of uh, possibilities for this funding source. So it'd be worth at least uh, looking into. But let's. Um, I'll, I'll set up a follow-up meeting for, for anyone who's interested and um, you know we can refine this a little bit further and or talk about the other other projects that we might uh, want to pursue and do a little research in uh, in advance of that okay sounds great all right uh, we've come to that part of the meeting uh, are there any other questions comments or topics that uh, folks want to bring up for the uh, good of uh, uh, the rest of the attendees? I guess I just want to add, so uh, most of you are familiar that through the block grant, we have some funding that's available and has been used for different, different projects um, related to bike walk. But what is really exciting for me is the possibility that if there would be something that would be linking the two towns, you know, two of the towns in our district, and there was some project that would take, um, you know, that would need funds from the, the linking both of you. I think that my, my program manager at DPH would love that. Um, he's very excited about the connectivity and how sort of things are spinning from Weathersfield to Rocky Hill, back and forth, other towns. So I, I guess I just want you to keep that in mind. And, you know, we don't have that much money. We don't have the kind of money that transportation has, but we have smaller amounts that might be able to help. So um, anyway, just please let's keep that in mind and keep me in the loop and we can talk about what that might look like. Uh, and uh, Kim, uh, Richie and I are gonna be talking uh, um, about areas of mutual uh, interest. So um, I will keep that in mind as I, uh, as I reach out to her. Um, so we'll probably do that in the next couple of weeks, maybe before our next meeting. So uh, I'd be happy to share any um, results of that with the, with the group. That would be great. Uh, the other, yeah, go, go ahead. If I could just add, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I would love to see happen is, uh, and, and you had mentioned it uh, in, in the bike connections, is that we do have three, three, three ways to connect with Weathersfield. You know, the Meadow, Great Meadows, uh, Middletown Avenue and Old Main Street and, and then Highland. And um, I guess that's Hayes Road for us. Uh, so we, we would love somehow if we could connect 
uh, and, and I did, I, you know, the walk by Rocky Hill did put together a, a Google, uh, a Google map that, uh, that does that already actually that, uh, they, where you can see the connections. Uh, we have, I've had a little bit of a discussion with, you know, parks and rec director Craig, and, uh, but, um, uh, you know, we're, we're at just a discussion phase. So for, for me, that would be a, a, a great way to, um, to do what Ann is, is uh, talking about connecting. Thank you, Ann. Yeah, those, uh, those partnerships like that uh, are really um, beloved by the grant providers. Um, so when we can um, marry up more than one town um, and work on a grant, uh, it always uh, uh, garners uh, uh, a much higher priority than it mm -hmm. might otherwise. Peter, a thought along those lines that goes back to the plan discussion a little bit is, uh, was there any mention of volunteers? Uh, and what I have in mind is something that um, uh, Jim and the Great Meadows Conservation Trust do a lot and Walk Bike Rocky Hill does a lot with trail maintenance. Um, if we were to try to uh, not formalize it, but uh, uh, recruit more people to do it. And if, if we did that, then I'm guessing that there are liability issues, uh, potentially labor issues and things like that for the town. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that needs to be fleshed out a little bit for uh, to be added to the plan or not. What kind of um, volunteer maintenance work are you thinking about, Kevin? Mostly trails. Okay, in parks, that kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I made that note. Uh, there are, um, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't get into it. But yeah, there are potential issues. But obviously, uh, um, they're not all insurmountable. So, one other thing, just to, to note, um, I am having um, some conversations with Mike Zaleski from Riverfront uh, Recapture um, about ways to. Uh, work uh, together uh, more closely going into the future. Those conversations are at a very early uh, stage, but just um, uh, we'll keep you posted. Um, and maybe um, as those uh, develop, we can uh, invite Mike to a, a future meeting um, and bring us up to, to date on uh, uh, what's going on. I know they have had some funding challenges recently, um, but um, things are looking better. Uh, than they were in the past. So uh, we'll keep you posted uh, on any anything that comes out of those conversations. Excuse me, Peter, it's Ann. Can you give me like a two sentence, what is River? what does Riverfront Recapture do again? Uh, so they- I, mean, I can um, understand from the name what they do, but- <laughs> Sure, they have a series. Yeah, they have a series of uh, uh, bike and walking paths on both sides of the Connecticut River in Hartford, East Hartford, all the way up. Uh, they just uh, expanded all the way up into Windsor. Um, and uh, you know, they host events and uh, do all sorts of uh, uh, waterfront uh, activities and in, in some of the uh, other facilities uh, along the river uh, in those communities. So um, that in a nutshell, Mike is a Weathersfield uh, resident um, and he's the, uh, I think it's executive director, although I'm not uh, sure about the title, but uh, he's the, the main guy uh, as uh, part of uh, the Riverfront Recapture Organization. They attended and had a booth at our um, open house and, and uh, workshop when we, uh, uh, so you may have bumped into him at the at the Keeney Center when we had our uh, pre-Halloween um, public uh, public open house. Thanks. Yep. If I can make some comments concerning the ferry that's in Rocky Hill. I think anytime we can get bicyclists between Weathersfield to the ferry, it's a win-win. Uh, Carol, I'm glad you brought that up. When we had our uh, Great Meadows um, forum um, with all the stakeholders from the Meadows, the uh, uh, suggestion was made that once the uh, Putnam Bridge trail connection is completed, that we establish a, a, a three-town um, loop kind of thing uh, and promote all three communities as part of a, 
a circular route that people could mm -hmm. take. They could come to Wethersfield, go down to Rocky Hill, go over the ferry, go into Glastonbury uh, and enjoy all of that. So that's, that's kind of on my uh, list of uh, things uh, to be uh, working on um, next year to get uh, the three communities to maybe uh, jointly uh, figure figure that out. And uh, it's, it's a it's kind of low hanging, low hanging fruit, very simple and easy thing for uh, uh, the three towns to work on. Peter, I was going to, before I forgot to come to the last meeting, I was going to say that I observed an incredible amount of sidewalk building activity along South Main Street, Glastonbury and Route 17. Yeah. Uh, going down into South Glastonbury. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm looking forward to really riding on that, but I think that connection, which would make that loop possible and safe, uh, should be really yes. great. Yep. Peter, when is that uh, Putnam Bridge? Is there, is there a, a schedule uh, now or? Uh, not yet. They're, uh, they're, they're wrapping up the final uh, design and bid documents. And we were, uh, we understand that they're, uh, uh, they want to start construction uh, next year. There's no, um, I, uh, uh, Derek, if I don't, I don't know if you recall if there was a, a more specific um, schedule, um, but they are, are gearing up. Uh, to get this thing uh, out to bid and under construction next year. Yeah, the the latest schedule I had heard was they wanted to bid it this winter and start construction uh, right first thing in the spring. Um, right. I know they have mentioned with our recent discussions that they do need the agreements from uh, the town of Weathersfield and Glastonbury regarding maintenance before they can move forward with the bid process. So that's still being worked out. Um, but hopefully, you know, we can keep them on schedule and, and, and get that project uh, constructed this year. Okay, anything uh, else uh, anyone wants to add in at this point in time? One thing I'd like to add is that we are, the Great Mills Conservation Trust is going forward with our winter walks uh, under COVID-19 adaptations, which is 10 walkers at a time and maybe and having a series of uh, every half hour, 10 people, 10 walkers taking off and uh, sign up pre-registration pre through Eventbrite with a waiver form. And I haven't worked out all the details yet, but y'all are invited. Jim, do you have the dates of those yet? I do have the dates. Uh, I, can send, uh, I can send that out if you'd like. Yes, if you'd send it my way, I can share it with everyone. That'd be great, yep. Okay. Thank you, that'd be great. We'll get it on our social media stuff too. Yeah, and Jim, don't forget to send it to Jesse so he can put it on the Great Elm. Yes, yeah, I, I've just been working out, sort of working the details and, and uh, trying to get myself ready for that. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, um, once again, another uh, reminder, uh, any photographs uh, that you want us to uh, incorporate into the plan would be uh, uh, well received. Please uh, uh, send them um, our way. If somebody wants to take uh, pictures of uh, uh, Highland Street and, and or Hartford Avenue uh, to show um, you know, the progress that's being made here in town, those would be great uh, things to uh, incorporate into the into the plan before the uh, take those before all the snow snow flies. And then lastly, um, uh, we scheduled our next meeting for Thursday, January 14th. So please put that uh, in your calendar. I will certainly be sending out the uh, Zoom meeting and the uh, agenda uh, invite as well. But uh, just to give you a heads up and a preview, um, and we'll be getting into the into the weeds a little bit at these next few meetings, but um, uh, we're, we're getting uh, to the end of this uh, process. So uh, hopefully you can, uh, you can join us at our next meeting. Uh, and if uh, we don't uh, see uh, all of you, uh, we wish you uh, uh, happy holidays and we'll see you uh, again, hopefully in uh, uh, 2021. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Stay safe.